Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Mr. Marco Teach. I hope you're enjoying these lessons on Shakespeare. Today, I'm going to give you one of my favorite lessons I used to like to do in the classroom when introducing students to Shakespeare. This is going to combine elements of Shakespeare and show how hip hop and Shakespeare intertwine. Let's start with a little into activity. I will give you the lyrics from either a Shakespeare play or a hip hop song. You need to decide, is it hip hop or Shakespeare? Here comes your first one. Answers will be given later. So we'll just fly through all of them now. First one, to destroy the beauty from which one came. To destroy the beauty from which one came. Please decide if you believe that is a hip <laughs> a hip hop lyric or Shakespeare to destroy the beauty from which one came. Number two, maybe it's hatred I spew. Maybe it's food for the spirit. Maybe it's hatred I spew. Maybe it's food for the spirit. Decide if you believe it is hip hop or a Shakespearean line. Maybe it's hatred I spew. Maybe it's food for the spirit. Number three, men would rather use their broken weapons than their bare hands. Men would rather use their broken weapons than their bare hands. Hip hop or Shakespeare? Men would rather use their broken weapons than their bare hands. Number four, I was not born under a rhyming planet. I was not born under a rhyming planet. Hip hop or Shakespeare? I was not born under a rhyming planet. Number five, the most benevolent king communicates through your dream. The most benevolent king communicates through your dream. Hip hop or Shakespeare? The most benevolent king communicates through your dream. Last one. Socrates philosophies and hypotheses can't define him. Socrates philosophies and hypotheses can't define him. Hip hop or Shakespeare? Socrates philosophies and hypotheses can't define him. As you watch the next video, the answers will be embedded inside it. Please don't cheat, just try on your own. It's very difficult to get all of them correct, but good luck and thank you for participating. This video will is from Ted Ed, and it is um, from a British rapper named Akala. He will present to you how he views Shakespeare and hip hop and how there is with the I iambic pentameter a rhythm, a beat to either how Shakespeare has written some of his lyrics and, and poems and dramas and how um, hip hop artists also embed that same technique into their works. I hope you enjoy the video as it looks over hip hop and Shakespeare. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if I could request the resetting of the clock, because it's on uh, four minutes at the moment. I presume from the one before, fantastic. Okay, so my name's Akala. Uh, I'm from the Hip Hop Shakespeare Company. And before we get into the philosophy of, of, of our work, what that means, what the intention is behind it, I'm gonna challenge you guys to a little bit of a pop quiz. And we've done this pop quiz quite a few times. We'll talk about it after we do it. I'm gonna simply tell you some quotes. One-line quotes taken either from some of my favorite hip hop songs or some of my favorite Shakespearean plays or sonnets. And you're going to tell me, by show of hands, whether you think it's hip hop or Shakespeare. Does that make sense? Okay. So the first one we'll go for is, to destroy the beauty from which one came. To destroy the beauty from which one came. Do you think that's hip hop? Raise your hands, please. Do think that's Shakespeare? Raise your hands, please. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, about 70% towards Shakespeare. It's from a gentleman known as Sean Carter, better known as Jay-Z, from a track called Can I Live? We'll go for another one. 
Maybe it's hatred I spew. Maybe it's food for the spirit. Maybe it's hatred I spew. Maybe it's food for the spirit. Hip hop? Shakespeare. Getting overwhelmingly towards the Shakespeare. Interesting. Anyone heard of a gentleman known as Eminem? <laughs> he is not Shakespeare. That's from a track Eminem did with Jay-Z actually called Renegade. We'll go for a couple more. Men would rather use their broken weapons than their bare hands. Men would rather use their broken weapons than their bare hands. Hip hop? <clears throat> Shakespeare. Pretty even spread with a Shakespearean lean. That one is from Shakespeare. It's from a play known as a fellow. We go for, I was not born under a rhyming planet. I was not born under a rhyming planet. Hip hop? Shakespeare. That one is Shakespeare. Too much to do about nothing. We'll go for two more. We'll go for the most benevolent king communicates through your dreams. The most benevolent king communicates through your dreams. Hip hop? Shakespeare. About 50 50 there. Gentleman known as the Rizza, who's the head of the Wu Tang clan. We're going to be revisiting the Wu Tang later. We'll be talking about them a lot as one of the main exponents of, of hip hop philosophy. Someone or a collective that were a huge influence on me. But we'll revisit that. Last quote of the day. Let's go for Socrates' philosophies and hypotheses can't define. Socrates' philosophies and hypotheses can't define. Hip hop? Shakespeare. Overwhelmingly towards hip hop on that one. That is hip hop. That's Wu Tang again. That's from a gentleman known as Inspector Deck. Interestingly, that quote comes from a single, a track known as Triumph, from the album Wu-Tang Forever. Wu-Tang Forever was the first hip-hop album to go number one in this country. So that was what made hip-hop crossover, was this kind of lyricism. But we're going to revisit that a little later and revisit the Wu-Tang, as I said. So, as you can see, it wasn't as clear-cut as many of us may have thought. The language used, the subject spoken about, Various things make it very, very difficult once the context is taken away, once our perception is taken away, and we have to look at just the raw language of the two, uh, the two art forms. And don't worry, we've done that exercise over 400 times, and as yet, no one has got them all right. Not even some of the most senior uh, professors at some of the most respected Shakespearean institutions in the country. I shan't name names. Um, but needless to say, it's challenged a lot of people's perceptions, and we extend from there. We look at some of the other parallels between hip-hop and Shakespeare, some of the other things that they share. One of the main things that is shared between the two is, of course, rhythm. The iambic pentameter, de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum Five sets, two beats is actually a wonderful rhythm to use in hip-hop music and translates in a way that even artists writing today find difficult. What do I mean by that? So it's very difficult to take, even as an MC who's a professional MC, a lyric you've written over a grime beat. Grime is 140 BPM, very, very fast uh, tempo and then take that same lyric and put it on a, what we consider to be a traditional hip-hop beat, 70, 80 BPMs. A very, very difficult skill, even writing now with the music to hand. Yet the iambic pentameter allows us to do just that. But I'll show you what I mean rather than tell you. So listen up. Cue music, please. What you're about to hear, some of you may know of it, some of you may not, is Shakespeare's most famous poem, Sonnet 18. I haven't doctored it to make it fit to the rhythm, but just listen close. Okay, yo. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art my lovely, you're more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's leaves have all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dim, and every fair from fair sometimes declines. By chance or nature changing course untrimmed, but thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of the fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in a shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest, so long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. As men can breathe and eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. 
Now, now, as you can see, it sits right there in the rhythm. It's right, right in the pocket of the beat. Now, we're going to try a completely different style of beat, different tempo of beat, but you're going to see the same lyric, because of this consistent rhythm, can fit. Shout, I compare thee to a summer's day. Thou I'm a lovely and more temporary. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of me. And summer's leaves have all too short a day. Sometimes too hot, I have heaven shines. And often is his gold complexion dim. And every fair from fair, sometimes declines. My chance on nature change the course untrimmed. But that eternal summer shall not fade. Nor lose possession of the fair thou owest. Nor shall death brag, the wonder is in a shade. When in eternal lines the time thou growest. So long as man can breathe or eyes can see. So long lives this and this gives life to thee. As man can breathe and eyes can see. So long lives this and this gives life to thee. What I'd like you all to do is just put your hand on your heart a second. Now, if you feel your heart, hopefully your heart should be beaten in sets of two. One off, one on, a D-dumb or an I am as we call it. If it isn't, I do suggest you consult a doctor as soon as possible. But because of that, you can take your hands off your hearts now. But because of that, that's why this rhythm is so intrinsic. You know, we, we're really, music is imitating the, the rhythm of life, the sounds of life the heartbeat of life, and, and so this rhythm, iambic pentameter, even though being such a simple rhythm is intrinsic to so many forms of music. Other places in the world, they have different sorts of rhythms, like the West African rhythm, it's on the three. People speak in, in triplets, essentially. But we found that this rhythm really acts as a mnemonic device for young people to remember the lyrics, but also really as a, as a, as a way to understand some of what is being said. The rhythm helps us understand it, it helps us communicate feeling, and of course in hip-hop, Tonality, the way you say what you're saying, the mood with which what you're saying, the rhythm with which what you're saying, is as important as what you're actually saying. But revisiting the philosophies and the perceptions or conceptions of these two art forms, these two things we think we know so much about, we'll start with Shakespeare. Over the course of the past three or four years, having worked with hundreds, thousands of young people now, you know, hundreds of workshops, we found out some very interesting uh, things about people's perception of Shakespeare, who they think he was, what the inherited beliefs of the times in which he lived, uh, the people he was surrounded by, his background are. Oh, some of them are, of course, just as with hip-hop, complete nonsense. This idea, for example, that Shakespeare spoke, as people say to us, posh, or the Queen's English, received pronunciation. Well, received pronunciation, we know, wasn't invented till well after 100 years after Shakespeare died. He'd never heard what we think of today as the Queen's English. When he was alive, people spoke a bit more like a mix between people from Yorkshire and Cornwall. So, for example, the word hours was pronounced urs, urs and urs and urs. Or mood and blood rhyme. Mood and blood was the way in which people would have pronounced those words. You know, the times in which he lived, you know, the chasm between rich and poor being larger than it is today, though we seem to be doing our best to, you know, recreate that chasm. But, you know, he was living in very tumultuous, very violent times, and we really received almost a sanitized vision of that violence, you know, coloring our view of the past. We know over 90% of Shakespeare's audience couldn't read or write. So how is it that in the 21st century, in Britain, that he's come to be viewed as, you know, almost the poster child for elitism? And, and even within that now, we're getting a debate, did he even write his own plays? Because, of course, this comes down to who's allowed to be the custodian of knowledge and who isn't. Shakespeare is someone who didn't go to Eton, who wasn't Oxbridge, is seen by some, we need to see him that way, as someone who's not entitled to be the custodian of knowledge. So we have to find an explanation for his intelligence rather than just accept his intelligence as an actual fact. Which brings me on to hip-hop. Many people have opinions of hip-hop. Of course, the media's had some very loud opinions of hip-hop. But I've found, again, over these working with thousands of people and these hundreds of workshops and interactions with these institutions, Many people that have an opinion of hip-hop know absolutely nothing about it. Zero. Zip. What do I mean by that? So, the very word hip-hop, the hip in that phrase comes from the Wolof verb hippie. Wolof is a Senegalese language. It means to open one's eyes and see. It is a term of enlightenment. The word hop from the English signifying movement. Thus, hip-hop means intelligent movement. Hip-hop contains five elements as codified by its founding fathers in New York City. It contains five elements. DJing, MCing, breakdancing, graffiti art, and the fifth element, which is the one I want to talk about today, knowledge. 
I hope you found that um, enlightening. I hope you learned a lot about Shakespeare and even a little bit about hip hop. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also hit the notification bell if you want to know when the next long distance learning episode, Mr. Marco Teach, will air. If you are a student of mine, make sure that you go to either my Weebly page or my Google Classroom and complete the worksheet study guide that goes along with the video. And then please share it with me, Google, Google, via Google Docs. Say that 10 times fast. All right, peace. I said, oh my God, I see you.